Thank you for auditing the always positive new music review show hosted by a French professor who doesn't understand why you want me to review the album Crest by Echo 2K and Blade? Blade E? Blade? Hey, Bladies! I'm not quite sure how to say his name. But boy, you really wanted me to review him. I put up a poll, you know, would you rather me review Rosalia or Blady? And I got about a, like a thousand votes on either side, okay? So obviously there's a lot of demand. Ever since last year, I've been getting all these messages in my comments, and I do read every comment. I don't respond to everyone, but I read everyone. And I got so many, you gotta review The, Fu the Fool by Blady, you gotta review something by Drain Gang, you've gotta do this, you've gotta do this. And the thing is, like, I believe you. You know, I don't believe everyone when they say that I should review something. Sometimes they're wrong. But if there's a critical mass of people who tell me that there's something that I would find interesting or I'd be able to describe in a way that other people find interesting, you're usually right. So thank you to my auditors who asked me to review this. But I, I didn't get it. I didn't get it at all. You see, this kind of asking is like the kind of asking I would get for... Playboy Cardi or 100 Gex. I was expecting some real internet music, some real edge lordy death grips like music. I knew it was like a white Swedish guy, so I was anticipating like maybe he does really outrageous stuff and maybe it's sort of like just you know, really like grindy and like maybe slightly culturally appropriated. I couldn't quite tell, but I was expecting something really edgy and really shocking and really having forced me to like adjust my ears and accept the way these young people are with their hyper and their popping and their whipping and their whopping. And then I, I learned that this guy is a part of a group called the Drain Gang, D-R-A-I-N, for my dad who watches my videos sometimes and he has trouble parsing out words because it's weird the way they go together. Drain Gang is a weird way to put together words. So I'm like, Drain, like that's kind of dirty, that's kind of gross. Are they gonna be sort of like this grindy core trash music? Or is it gonna be like Gucci Gang? Is it gonna be all like talking about flossing and having money? I was anticipating, before listening to this album, a kind of internet heavy, irony laden, grotesque, silly, probably kind of gnarly, and probably pretty good. Before I even listened, I, I did a little bit of research. I looked up who Blady was. Blady, um, uh, it turns out he's worked with Young Lean. Another artist I don't really understand that well. I've listened to a little bit of his stuff to get the idea. I guess he's been working with Kanye, so I'll have to find out soon enough. It turns out that Blady is also a model and a, and a designer. So, and he used to be in a punk band. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna have a little sip of my coffee. I don't edit my videos, so you're just gonna have to live with me while I do this. Wasn't so bad, right? You don't need all the cuts all the time. You can have just a, just a dude just drinking a cup of coffee. You know, so I did even more research and I found out that he was in a punk band. And so I knew he was a rap artist, but then he started off in a punk band. And so I'm maybe thinking, well, maybe he's not hip hop, you know. Maybe he's just doing hip hop because it, it, he knows it will sell. You know, like a YouTuber who does video games because that's the only thing that will sell, right? Speaking of which, did you know I had a video game channel for one video? I did. It didn't go very well. Um... <clears throat> But like, okay. And then I, I went on Reddit. And I went to the Drain Gang subreddit on Reddit and said, if this is my first thing listening, what should I expect? Let me tell you what they all responded. Nothing. I didn't even get a single upvote. Not a single upvote. <laughs> Nobody read my comment. So I'm like, okay, I have a couple friends in Sweden. I messaged them. Hey, what do you guys know about Drain Gang? Nothing. Never heard of them. Had to look them up. They sent me a link to some song called Eloise, which is what they consider to be Swedish rap. <laughs> Anyways. Which all leads up to the fact that if you are a fan of this album and a fan of Blady, you have been laughing your ass off at my expectations. <laughs> what I am expecting to hear and what I heard is radically different. I pressed play on title and I said, what the hell is this? How is this hip-hop? Who is this for? Wh 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 
what's going on? Why do people want me to review this? There's nothing to hold on to with this music. It's all just... But by my last listen this morning, about my fifth listen to this 30 minute project, I was eating my Quaker oatmeal squares. I'm not sponsored. That's what I was eating. That's the cereal I was eating with blueberries as well. While I was eating that, looking out my picture window, I had some beers in the backyard. I was like, damn, I love this album. I wonder, I wonder if it's like for sale. I like went on Bandcamp and tried to figure out if I could get it there. I went to the label. I tried to figure out like if I could order it off of there. So how did I go from one to another? Well, I have a theory and it's just a theory and you can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, all of you who are drain gang aficionados, drain gang bangers as you are, I think there's probably based on this project, and this is the only project I've listened to, but what I assume is this, that there's stages to liking Drain Gang. That the first stage is repulsion. Like, what do I grab onto here? <laughs> like, what is there? What am I listening to? Where's the form of this music? The second is acceptance. You sort of accept the softness. This weird combination of weird and soothing, odd and comforting at the same time. Finally, appreciation, which is the stage I am at right now, where you come to appreciate this atmosphere, the lyrical approach, the spirituality, the ephemeral, angelic, celestial feeling of this music. And then there's the fourth phase, which I may never get to, or I'm in the early stages of. Literal Christ, the fourth is obsession. And that's why I think so many people reach out to me, is I understand. I may not understand why people love this music so much, but I understand it's the kind of music, when you go through that kind of process to get to loving something, you form a stronger bond with it. I saw it with my kids, where the first time I played this for them, you know, they were like, what, what, what is this? Eh, this, is, this isn't very good. And then like the second time we were getting Chinese food yesterday and they were like, I don't like it a lot. <laughs> you know, like they went from, I hate this to, I don't like it a lot. So it actually has like moved from that repulsion stage to the acceptance stage. So I think it's, it really is like when you listen to it, it's very amateur sounding. Uh, it doesn't sound like professional musicians working in a studio. It sounds like a very bedroom thing. It's very sort of dream pop, or at least dreamy. My first listen, I was reminded a lot of the work of Patricia Taxon. I've done a lot of videos on. That kind of, kind of nerdy, multi-genre, intimate bedroom area. I remember thinking like, like, on that first listen, like, what's wrong with all these young people who are contacting me? Like, why are they not listening to like, awesome hardcore rap music? Why, why, why are they accepting this? The most important phase in my growth from repulsion to acceptance to appreciation was having the lyrics in front of me. Because the main thing this album does is it does not put the lyrics up front. It's two people from Sweden. I guess one of them's Echo 2K is from England, but he lives in Sweden. And Blady is just from Sweden. So they don't have a super heavy accent. There's a little bit of an accent, but they're just sort of rapping very quietly behind things. So when I read the lyrics, I realized that the, the, the soundscape, it's all created by someone named White Armor, uh, one, a part of the Drain Gang, that this gentle, ephemeral, angelic soundscape is echoed by the lyrics. And this sort of vibe, this, this all important word to this Gen Z, uh, is really important because it's emphasized with this album, which is not really a rap album, although it does use some of the trappings of rap. It, it's not really a pop album, although it does use some of the trappings of pop. Um, but the but stylistic, like spiritually, it's about life and death. It's about it's an anti-materialist, but not anti-materialist in saying like, if you wave a Gucci, you're an idiot, or if you buy a Lamborghini, you're wasting your money. 
anti-materialist like this material, like flesh, anti, anti-flesh, pro-soul, anti-flesh, okay? Which then uses Christian, Taoist, Buddhist philosophies to bolster that pro-soul, anti-human body position. I get it. I get it, you drain gangbangers, why you're so into it. Because once I got into that area and I realized how deep this album is, and it is deep, it is truly deep. It is a truly deep meditation on spirituality. And then you just had this music behind, this kind of dream hyper pop. <laughs> Like, how can something be hyper-pop and relaxing at the same time? Listen to this album, Crest, and you'll find out. I'm actually just reminded of Crest Toothpaste. I once went to a, uh, a dentist when I didn't have health insurance in, in the Bay Area. And uh, it was in San Jose. And uh, he had a, a faded picture of his Mercedes from like 20 years ago on the wall. Bad sign number one. Bad sign number two, I could smell his breath through his mask. Bad sign number three, he had behind his desk this, this sticker for Crest toothpaste, but it said Christ instead of Crest. <laughs> That's, I, I want my dentist believing in science, not, not, not in a higher power. Anyways, terrible dentist. Uh, he, didn't use enough, uh, he didn't use enough Novocaine, and I told him that, and he said, you'll be fine. <laughs> Which, that, that was a very, so I'm just now realizing maybe the reason I didn't like this album so much is because it reminded me, because it sings so much about Jesus and about spirituality, the kind of mixing that in with this other theme uh, of Crest. Maybe I was getting those things mixed up. I don't know. Getting back to my original point, this is not on my notes. I'm just thinking of that while I'm talking. Do you like the story about my bad dentist in San Jose? Feel free to tell me in the comments. Um, in a way, I think we could really put this album in conversation with like a Playboy Cardi album because there's a lot of similarities with this sort of repetition and aesthetic, but it's sort of trying to be angelic where Playboy Cardi is trying to be demonic. I suspect that the actual people are very similar, but there's a totally different sort of uh, it's a totally different sort of um, approach to the music. So we have this anti-materialist side to it. There's also, and this is weird, a real anti-sex vibe to this album. This album is very virginal. It seems to be very voluntary celibacy. Now I'm not saying like the people who, who don't masturbate to maintain their chi, which isn't new by the way. <laughs> people have done... <clears throat> Anyways, at a weird senior year of high school. That's not a new thing. That's not what I'm saying they're doing. Um, but what I am saying is that part of this anti-material, like there really seems to be a negative view of hypersexualization, which again puts this whole album in a weird state for being a pop hip hop album. The cover of the album, which I put in my thumbnail, you can see, you know, it's just a little house in a field. And that kind of hugely feeling, that warm and cozy feeling is something that they're going for. And it reminds me of something that has become more and more clear the more that I do this channel. Young people need soothing. They need music that helps them relax. Okay? I, I didn't want that when I was a young person. You, you tried to play Sade for me? <laughs> Shady. You tried to play Sade for me? I would have thrown, I would have taken the Alpine, that was a kind of car radio, I would have taken the Alpine out of the dash, chucked it out the window, you know, like, no way. When I was a young person, I only wanted aggro, awesome, hardcore music. Like, the most downbeat I would accept is like, Tangerine Song by Led Zeppelin, but that was it. But I think this young generation literally needs more calming music. I think it's partly because of the, the world around them, but also it's the way that technology has infiltrated our minds and made things hard to calm down. I think, I think that's why we have artists like, uh, like Yeet and like Blady having such an impact is because when you listen to them, you can turn off a little bit. You can relax. It's sort of meditative. 
And instead of hearing that and just going, these young people, why are they listening to this music? They should be listening to awesome hardcore prog rock. No, it's just different. So I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you a stamp from this album. I'm going to include a link to it up there. It's not my favorite song on the album. My favorite song on the album, Literal Crest. We'll get to that later. But I think it's a good example song. It's called Five Star Crest for Vaternrum. This song has like five different parts to it. And each part shows the dynamism of the group, of these three Swedes making this odd music. The gentleness, the sweetness, the philosophical tinge of this song really works well. It's a good example of the rest of the music. Um, it's dedicated to their friend who died of suicide. And like just off the, the beginning, <clears throat> there's this sort of like soft and light bit with this guy Echo 2K, who's the voice. And I think he's the most important I think he's really important because he really softens Blady. I mean, Blady isn't even that isn't even that uh, that hard, but Echo Two K is basically always sort of singing and soft and light, like, like like you know people who give you like really like very like light handshakes. This guy's voice is like one of those just light handshakes. And in the background, there's some sort of vague sounding video game sounds. He keeps singing about the fountainhead and the arrowhead. I'm not quite sure what... I don't think the fountainhead is referring to Ayn Rand. I hope it's not. I don't think it is. Um, but that's a good example of the kind of spiritual-ish lyrics with this theme that keeps coming back and back of the arrowhead. If you have theories about what the arrowhead and the fountainhead are, tell me in the comments. Um, uh, smash the like bucket. Subscribe. But buy my merch. You don't have to buy oatmeal squares. <laughs> that's, a, not, that's a personal choice. That's not an advertisement. But then the second part of this really highlights what I like about this album so much. There's a full beat change. We had this upbeat song. And this is why I had to read the lyrics. Because I knew that it ended with the sound from Street Fighter 2. Whenever you beat somebody without taking a hit. Perfect! I knew it did that. But I couldn't hear the lyrics beforehand. Gloria in excelsis Deo. So this is, if you're a Christian, uh, basically all, most Christian faiths, okay, Protestant and Catholic faiths, will sing a song called Gloria in excelsis Deo. Many different interpretations of it. It's an important part of the sort of Christian liturgy. And so it's fascinating having this idea of like thinking about death and then singing this Christian song about glory and then having it tagged with the guy from Street Fighter 2 saying, perfect, it's very cool. It's very interesting. It, it forms a, a contradictory but comprehensible thesis about like the nature of existence, the nature of transcendence, of going past and leading into, into, into heaven and being in contact with God. And of course, when you are in contact with God and when you are in contact with your soul, you understand that life and everything is perfect. That's the joke. <laughs> that's that serious goofiness. That's really great. <clears throat> and it's like, and then like this beat change is like almost like like come on, ride the train. You ride it. There's a lot of interesting boo boo boo. A lot of outcast influence I hear in the in the producing here. <clears throat> kind of like doubling and like stutter stepping with the bass as well. Part three is just all all bloody again. Uh, with a little light singing from Echo in the back, all about being the head of the arrow, and just really nice produced bits with like kind of harpsichord sounds, and then just singing everywhere. Nothing is forever. Wishing will get you nowhere. Lots of themes of impermanence. Lots of themes of not being tangible. The fourth part is Blady again. Uh, and this has the sound from Six Million Dollar Man when he like changes. Uh, kind of gentle synthesizers before a part which really is best described as a dance dance revolution beat. I don't mean that as criticism. Um, <laughs> Beauty is my drug. I'm the pusher. So that's as close as they get to any kind of standard rap thematics here. We think we exist. That's why we suffer. Do we not? Yeah, we think we exist. So I don't know. Is this a play on Descartes? Probably. Descartes who explained that because we are capable of thinking, that is our only in, uh, indiscutable, indiscutable, that's a French word, uh, 
unarguable proof of our existence is that we can think, right? That's, I think, therefore I am. But we suffer because we think we exist, when in reality, I guess what he's saying is we don't exist. Sweet but treacherous is the poison, baby. Give it to me raw. Death is beautiful. 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 Repeat it over and over and over and over. Death is beautiful. Death is beautiful. Death is beautiful. Death is beautiful. Implied in death is beautiful is also life is beautiful. This is a song that's not saying that death is good or it's good that their friend died, but it's about this transcendence leading into the fifth part, which is very muttering and weird to kiss and to love these weird sounds with the words, I love you, mumbled in the back. <clears throat> kind of a guttural sound and almost like whale sounds at the end. It's a whole journey and it's a good example of what this album is. Not my favorite song though, I'll get to my favorite song soon enough. I'm not gonna go through the rest of the album in order. The first track is Flag Is Raised, Soft Drum Machine. Again, very kind of outcasty. Reminds me a lot of, uh, of some of their popular songs from the early 2000s. This theme, very interesting. The hero is the soul. I am but a shell. Uh, it's funny because when I looked at Lyric Genius, um, Lyric Genius is, is it's not made by experts, right? It's made by fans. And you can tell that Blady's fans are very young and not super educated in a lot of ways. Um, that sounds obnoxious, but like as an example, for the Gloria and Excelsius thing, um, there's a reference to a specific version of it that puts it forth as though like this song is known because Bach did a version of it. And that's, that's just sort of like lacking that, that perspective. And this here as well, it's referring to this and saying that it must be a reference to the anime Ghost in the Shell, which may be true, but the, the theme of a human body being a shell and the soul being the only thing that really matters is about as old as human existence. So that there is a, just kind of a, an interesting caveat there where it really seems like, like the, sometimes the people who are excited to share their thoughts maybe don't have... Uh, What's well, also a weird thing because I assume Blady and this whole group is a, is produced by the uh, school system in in Sweden, and I love American schools, but we're not as educated. Just high school students are just not as educated uh, in America as they are in most of Europe, in terms of what they're expected to learn. So I also think there might be a little bit of a disconnect there, where they're sort of like young people but they've also had a lot more exposure to languages and cultures and philosophy than your typical American musical listener. I'm sorry, Americans. I'm an American too. <laughs> My kids are American, but we don't ask very much of our high school students. Um, lots of just layers and layers, unclear voice, you really have to listen to the lyrics. Um, just going over and over again, here comes the feeling you should never let it go. It's always a good test for any of the albums that I review if I can hear the song in my head while I'm talking about it. And so far that's happened with each song I hear in my head as opposed to just having the one song stuck in my head. Um, Echo 2K comes in here, very soft, high, sweet voice. Um, just a really Christian second chorus. She shines her light on me, Maria, Holy Gloria. Part of me wonders if they're not trying to do some kind of like mass like an actual like Catholic style mass with different movements that are tied into the Christian mass. I, I looked into it a little bit. I, I didn't find enough uh, evidence to support that theory, but maybe I didn't look deep enough. Again, please tell me in the comments if you do. Um, and then we get to Stamp, the Stamp of the Song, which is Five Star, and then White Meadow, um, which is the third track, another gentle beat it's not really rapped at all, it's just sung, but there's this nice kind of warbled, uh, warbled vocoder sound. Very poetic description of things. It's kind of like the cover, you know? Like, I think between the cover and the atmosphere, I realized Drain Gang, if this is representative of the Drain Gang, is like the Teletubbies. So that sounds like an insult, but Teletubbies are pretty interesting. Like Teletubbies are kind of weird, right? Like they just like live in that weird field and they just walk around and talk to each other. <laughs> and everything's kind of like bright and light and it's soothing and it's relaxing. So like I was, I was listening to White Meadow and I was hearing these nice descriptions. Uh, a flower sprout tries to reach heaven. And then I, this little red house. And then I pictured all those little chubby Teletubbies talking to each other. This bridge is like la 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 la. 
la. Pick the sweetest poison. Um, but it's really nice. It's really good. I'm not making fun of it. Um, I think it's important that we have music that's like Teletubbies. Um, <clears throat> but then again, Teletubbies, I'm too old for Teletubbies. And probably most of, of, Bla of Blady's fans are too young for Teletubbies. So who knows? Did you watch Teletubbies? Please, I, I'm, oh, Jesus Christ. Am I actually asking you this? I am. I am. <laughs> if you are a Blady fan or a Drain Gang fan, did you also see Teletubbies growing up? Or was that already done? <clears throat> you don't need to tell me what your favorite cartoon was. That would just be pandering for, for interaction. You know. What's better, Rugrats or Spongebob? Rugrats, by the way. So the last verse has this kind of driving, like very driving music. And that's what I realized I like about this so much. The, the voice is all kind of chopped up and cut up, but it's also, it's also again, still relaxing in this theme, like come closer, come closer. And then this morning, while I was eating the aforementioned oatmeal squares, I just like loved this song. I was just like so happy to be listening to it. And that's where I, I developed this theory of the four stages because I could see myself at some point in the next week being like, I've got to listen to White Meadow again. Next song is called Faust. Um, <laughs> this is the best example of what I'm talking about with, uh, with Lyric Genius sometimes being filled with over-eager people who maybe don't have the biggest frame of reference. Someone was claiming that it's called Faust after a character in a video game named Faust. So that's that American school system not working out so great. Most places in the world know that Faust refers to a sort of mythological character in uh, Western literature made most popular by Goethe of a person who sells their soul for material wealth. And then when they die, the devil comes to collect their soul. That's that term, Faustian bargain. So <laughs> it was kind of funny to be like, this is clearly about the character Faust in Kingdom Hearts 11 or whatever the hell video game it was. Um, but it works really well in the theme of this album, the actual Faust, not the video game character, because that's sort of what they're implying we all are if we don't believe in the perfect nature of not necessarily Jesus, but our soul and spirituality. Very gentle synth beats, very breathy, sweet sounds, almost ASMR at times. I really like the, like the chorus, the effects on Echo 2K's voice, I want to live in heaven. Uh, more thematics of trying to be closer. And there's a really nice instrumental outro, which has kind of childish... Uh, pianos. I've been teasing you the whole video about my favorite song. My favorite song, this is probably going to be one of my favorite songs of the year. Yeses. Red Cross. Delicate ethereal bells. If you've ever made music on a computer, they, they have a lot of different keyboard settings. And it always drives me crazy that there's like 50 goddamn settings for different like synth pad waves that make just just very light, soft sounds where I want a whole bunch of different synth lead sounds like in general. <laughs> Nothing sounds like the noises I just made. Um, but like when I listen to this, I'm like, oh, now here's some producers who are happy to have all those different kinds of soft sounds. Um, and, but then we just have this really great chorus. Yes, 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 yes. Literal Christ, literal Christ. I don't know what it means, literal Christ. I don't know exactly what they're talking about. I suppose they're literally talking about Christ. But the way those words go together, ever since I've been, I, I learned what the lyrics were to the song, I've just been walking around and like my wife will ask me like, oh, could you put away the milk? I'll just be like, yes, 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 literal Christ, I'll put away the milk, right? Like it's that kind of in my head. That's how songs get to that obsession point. Uh, just so that those words are some of my favorite lyrics of the year. Then it goes to sex sells, sex sells, sex sells. Going back to these themes of anti-sex, which is in here. Um, a real enlightenment verse here from Echo 2K. Ballerina spiral like a black swan. Dropped everything off at the Red Cross. Bless, bless, bless. Follow the white fox. Is this a cult? <laughs> is, is this a that's my my one fear for you drain gangbangers uh is just be careful if they ask you to like sell your sell your worldly goods and shave your head and move to sweden uh it might be kind of a midsummer situation <laughs> you might want to stay away from it uh who wants to see god <laughs> something's up i know it those are the lyrics um just take the spirituality without like 
you know, praying to the sun god, okay? Uh, next song is called Desire is a Trap, which is a straight pop song. And just that's just a straight Buddhist philosophy, just that the desire for things is a trap. And it's true. We know it's a trap because the desire to own things is the trap that most of us are in. Interesting idea. Um, the funny thing was when I read the title of this before listening to it, I was expecting this to be the most kind of hundred gexy playboy card. Desire is a trap. Desire is a trap. And then it's just this really nice, sweet song. Uh, very like nice lead line, just very winding underneath, like very childlike, very dream poppy, very gauzy. Starts with echo, uh, singing just almost like, um, flowing like a river downward. Staying stiff and rigid under pressure cuts you into powder. Um, it's so. Speaking of my dad, when I mentioned at the beginning of the channel uh, video, he uh, he he collects rocks with holes in them. Like whenever we go to the beach, he like asks me to find rocks with holes in them, and he does it for this reason, this kind of uh, Taoist understanding that the river is more powerful than the rock, right? Because over time, water will make a hole in everything. It is the universal solvent. So there's the 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 philosoph the philosophy the philosophy of the Taoists, as in the Tao Te Ching, that that's the true strength. That passivity is the true strength, not aggression and power, but actually that passivity and persistence. Isn't that gorgeous? So. This is really driven home when Blady comes back in in this chorus with all these layers upon layers, and he says, show me the virtue of the way. And it's literally, I mean, literal Christ. So you had the one song that's literal Christ that sounds like it could be some kind of Christian rap song. And then you have this, which is, as far as I can tell, the first Taoist rap song. <laughs> So when I was in high school, I had a phase where I got really into the Tao Te Ching, which is a book written by someone named Lao Tzu, which describes all of these theories. And if you need to boil it down to one theory, just go back to the rock and, and, the, and, the, and the stream, right? You can get the biggest rock in the world and put it in the smallest stream, and eventually the stream will, <laughs> will whittle that down to nothing, right? So I think that's important. I think it's an interesting idea, and it's very against a lot of a lot of more general, not just hip hop thematics, but pop music thematics, Western music thematics at all. Music thematics at all, because most people who are making music are trying to make music to make money, make a living, in addition to getting out their art. Here it's just saying that. Another weird true story, um, when I was in high school, I was sent a, a bumper sticker by AOL, America Online, and it said, I love AOL, and I cut it up because I was into reading uh, Lao Tzu at that point, and I changed it to, I love Lao. And it was a famous thing where people would stop me and be like, what does that mean? And I'd be like, have you heard about, I was like an evangelist for, for Taoism, which is very funny because passivity is the main thing. I wasn't a very good Taoist. I'm not very good at being passive. Next song is called Chaos Follows. Very weak and gentle voice with kind of blasting sounds underneath. Um, it's interesting, you know, like the, the sort of cult question I have here where he refers to people as swallows, fly my swallows, swear to the one your loyalty, no tomorrow, nothing is promised as you see, face these horrors, don't break under the weight and carry, all about persevering. Jesus, this really sounds more and more like a cult <laughs> I'm hearing it. Nothing is promised, fly my swallows, fly my swallows. <laughs> Uh, the next song is Girls Just Want to Have Fun, um, which I thought would be a hyper-pop reimagining of the Cyndi Lauper song, which always bugged me because she didn't write it. Girls Just Want to Have Fun was written by a man, and in that context, it's kind of a misogynist song. But I understand it's sort of a girl boss anthem, and I should just let that go. This has nothing to do with that. I don't know what it really is about, um, other than this desire to not be desired. I looked up what they mean by drain gang at one point, and it's all about the concepts of loss and gain, that a drain can be something that you lose something down, or you can drain something of power and gain it. So it seems like the concept of drain gang is tied into this larger Taoism that they're, they're trying, to, trying to get going. Um, so that has to do with girls just want to have fun? I don't know. 
I'm, I'm a little bit lost at this point as to why this song is called Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, except for maybe it's continuing along this anti-sex thing that we hear throughout the album. The album ends with a song called Heaven Sings, which is winding down for an album that never really got wound up in the first place, celestial high singing sounds with more vague words of spirituality. So there's my review. I like this album a lot. I really enjoyed studying it. I really appreciate my auditors and their uh, insistence that I check out Blady. Um, that's a Jerry Lewis reference, by the way. <laughs> he would always say, ladies. Um, I, I'm really happy that I got into this and that I explored it. Uh, part of why I do this channel is to challenge myself to understand new music. And this might have been the most challenging thing I've listened to. Because something like 100 Gex, the challenge is so clear that I, I, I know what I have to do. I have to hear, you know, and go, I like this. But something like this, when things are soft, when things are Taoist, having to appreciate them, that's a little bit complicated. Okay, well, there you go. There's my review. Thank you for watching it. And uh, until next time, there's the camera.